we go. All right, 76 people now. So we are half of that, but we have normally, but uh, I think it's 15 past. So maybe we start, what do you think, Risto? Yeah, yeah, the train leaves the station. All right, welcome everyone. So this time it's more my, uh, my part, my role, my responsibility for running the show, but uh, Risto will start now uh, with the recap or some reflections of your uh, weekly exercise. Uh, and this is now the fourth. Uh... Yeah. You muted You're me. Mute. Sorry. Did I? I Am I still? You. Do you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it. Uh, Annika did it. Yes. <laughs> what a statement. Kind of I tried to pin <laughs> you, but I muted you. So. <laughs> no, no problem. But anyway, so uh, two more to go after this, but uh, let's go to, to, to our to reflection of weekly exercise. So please, Risto, if you take, take a stage now. I'll take it from here. Thank you, Yari. So last week was all about champagne like in the Eurovision song. Um, some people celebrated the silver medal and some the gold medal, but we all celebrated the fact that our goals started to be more clear. Let's start with that. Oh, the beautiful clarity. So just reminding last week, it was all about clarity uh, because it's so actually important. And I think there is this saying that clarity is kind. Unclarity is unkind. I think I, uh, that's from the alcohols, Alcoholic Anonymous. Uh, so it's a good principle in many contexts. Anyway, here is a goal. Let's say that this is your objective. Number of users that use the new features rise and new features cause no large issues to existing users. This is not one of yours, this is an example. And the, the kind of the point of my speak last week was that, okay, so if this is our goal, how do we, know that if it has happened, if it's enough that we have one user and so forth, and then think no, abstract things, no large issues to existing user, what does it mean and all that. So, hey, what if our goals are such that they're easily doable, understandable, measurable and beneficial such as this? Putting numbers into it, for example, using terms that everybody in the context understands. Uh, being a little bit careful with adjectives like large, what does it actually mean? And that was the point. And the same that, remember the dumb is here. And I think I was looking at what you returned. It was pretty obvious that many of you had realized that it is a good, good tool into getting the goals. So then this being a facilitation course, just really reminding everybody that what a great facilitation tool and how simple. So let's say that if you have a goal like that on the left-hand side, then you as a facilitator, just ask these four questions. Hey, oh yeah, yeah, so that's the goal. Is it doable? What do you think? Uh, are you sure this is understandable for everyone? Uh, by the way, how do we measure that? And uh, is it beneficial for the big picture? And then, you know, by facilitation, you get a new iteration of the goal. It becomes perhaps better, more clear and so forth. So that was really the point of last week. Uh, so what did you do? A couple of, I think, really good pointers. Again, I picked up from your reflections. This one I liked a lot. One of you wrote, quantifying is important. So putting things into numbers. As it is easier for the human brain to grasp actual numbers rather than uncertain comparative words such as more, further, deeper, and so forth. Then the person continues, also these words are subjective, meaning that different people understand these words differently. So I think that, that there's a lot of wisdom in that. We all like numbers, numbers are clear, numbers are unambiguous. Uh, and maybe that, you know, if you have words like further or more, there's, there's different interpretations. Nothing wrong with words like that as such, as long as everybody interprets them the same way. Then somebody else wrote, this tool, the DUMB, serves as an external motivator, encouraging the team to work towards accomplishing the goal. Yeah, I think that was a good angle. I'm not sure if I mentioned this last week, but this actually, you know, having this facilitation process, doing the dumb exercise, motivates people. They can see things become practical, concrete. Excellent point. 
And this one really underlines the fact that it's a reality check. Maybe it's related to the previous comment as well, that rather than having fluffy things that are kind of, you know, up there in the air, this makes things more real, or at least in the exercise, the, the person wrote this down, that it made kind of a reality check to all the plans and everything. And then the last point being that the fact that you even try to set concrete goals for the long term is really important. From your thought process point of view, even if they, the goals, later turn out to be wrong or requiring updates or modifications, then at least you have something more tangible to work with. So I, I really agree, whoever wrote this, that the fact that even if you don't get a perfect thing, and maybe it's even impossible to get a perfect DUMB goal, it is the process that, you know, that we're trying to clarify this, that we're trying to understand how this could be measurable. Perhaps you cannot measure the thing. Maybe you're trying to, I don't know, measure love. You cannot measure love, but maybe it's worth you know, <laughs> trying or something like that. But you get the point. So excellent quotes again. Thank you for the people who I honestly don't remember who wrote this anymore. I just copy paste. Nevertheless, one point, and I'm sure you maybe you already realized this when starting to do the, the exercise last week, that you can set down goals, you can write goals either for communicating togetherness. But you have a group of people, three people, 13, 30 people, 300 people. And when you set a goal, you are actually communicating that how do we do this together? Or you can look at goal setting as you know very practical, saying that now this is our goal. This is the state of affairs that has to happen 2025 in August or something like that. And they are a bit different. And you need to be, and I'm, my next slide is obviously going to say that you need to be conscious of what are you doing. There's not, not saying that they're, either one is right or wrong, but you need to understand if you go, set your goals, something like that, let's say that, you know, with my bicycle over here, that I have biked. 500 kilometers by the end of the year. And that is setting a state of affairs that I want to happen. You know, like the bullet says, the fact that we want to be true at a given time. Uh, maybe you're not me, maybe you're not sure, but this is the goal that you're steady, say, uh, setting. And here, I think these can be complex things. These can be uncertain things. Uh, if you're doing something creative, radically new, you don't necessarily know what is the exact state of affairs? So complex objectives in this case, I would say they are okay because typically we want to achieve difficult things. You know, you could write down, we want our customers to love us. And if you set that, that that's our you know, mission or goal, in a way, the complexity is kind of okay here. But next you to start thinking about how you measure it. Uh, and here the idea is that you don't necessarily change the objectives all the time. You kind of hammer this in for the next three years. This is the state of aware affairs we want to be. And here's the stability becomes, you know, at least we have this one goal that is stable. However, on the other side, that if you're using goals to communicate togetherness, to create belonging, to help people to do as a collective the same thing. Then you have a little bit of a different stance. You're making sure the stakeholders understand them. That's part of communication. The reification participation becomes extremely important here. Really good in the other one as well. They should be definitely understood. And, and you're practically setting a vision for people. Complex objectives are, in this case, bad because people don't understand them. So it's a kind of a different kind of complexity. You want to avoid that. Here, clarity is really kind. And here, maybe the change in the objectives is the point of the thing that you are iterating. You're changing them because you're trying to understand where we're going. Because it's a dialogue. So as a facilitator, kind of the whole point of this, after now that you have done the exercises, maybe you should find yourself asking a question like this, that, hey, by the way, everybody, I want to be really sure, are we making these goals A, for communication purposes, B, state of affairs, 
see both. Because I think at the end of the day, you are kind of tackling both. But just making sure that everybody understands what we are aiming at on the kind of metal level, if you will. So that was kind of point number one from the, uh, now that you have done the exercise. And the other one that was pretty obvious uh, came from your answers was that, well, the M part, that's tough. The D is okay, U, the B, quite easy. The M is difficult. So in other words, it's the fact that you start measuring things. How do you measure? Where do we get the metrics? What is a good metric? And so forth. Can we even measure this? We want our customers to love our products. How do we measure love? Yeah, that's a tough challenge. My, here's kind of my take on it. I think that the measuring, and remember, we are going more and more into the world where we get data and we have different you know, sensors and we're measuring everything. But actually the M, writing it down beforehand is actually difficult because it typically requires a lot of change. So we might have to change the processes. You know, it could be the production process. Well, anyway, the processes in our organization uh, so that we actually get our accountability. We might need to have to change people's thinking and attitudes rather than, you know, because the problem is that we might be wrong. If we start measuring this thing really well, it might turn out that we are wrong. Third one, decision-making. Now suddenly we measure things, we get data. We cannot do things just by gut feeling. We actually need some kind of data and insights to prove our decisions or help to make those decisions. Maybe the whole technical infrastructure has to change. We need to build an infrastructure for all the measurements, the data acquisitions and so forth. Uh, so how do we get the data? Changing the objectives. So there's now less room for interpretation. If it says that by the end of the year, I have to bike 500 kilometers, there's very little room for interpretation. If I didn't bike or did I bike or did I take the car? That, you know, that's the thing. It's gonna probably change power relations. It's not more the, you know, the data becomes the king. In a way, you can go overboard with that. But at least, the, you know, the authority doesn't necessarily know best. You know, well, let's go and ask our customers. What do they think about this? Well, let's make this survey. I can make this survey in five seconds and let's ask everybody. Rather than, you know, the authority saying that, no, no, this is how it goes. And then change in what is quantifiable. So I think there's change required that. What can we actually put into the numbers? And just remembering myself being more of a qualitative researcher background, just reminding that data is, we typically think that data is numbers, but I think data can be qualitative stuff as well, you know, words and concepts and so forth. So anyway, there's what I'm saying, seven, seven good reasons for you to skip the M letter. So if you don't really like the M letter, if you just want to dub and you don't want to be dumb, then here are seven great excuses. Uh, not get outside of your comfort zone. Nevertheless, uh, my last slide is this, again, as facilitators, I could even say as leaders, uh, the point of view means that, just like the one quote from one of you said, that just the exercise of doing the dumb is really good. You can think of as a facilitator, if you're pushing other people to really go and try to get really good metrics, even though if it doesn't make sense. Uh, you might be actually popping things onto the surface that nobody has realized, or maybe invisible things. And here are all the seven things I had there. Accountability. So if we put a number on this, it will. you can start seeing that, well, okay, nobody wants to be accountable. Nobody wants to take the responsibility. Because if we put metrics here, that will show who is responsible. Or the second one is obvious as well. Now, if we start measuring this, there is this danger that we are wrong. We have been wrong for five years and so forth and so forth. Maybe the second last is another good one. If we start measuring this thing, it means that, you know, the top management doesn't have the power to make decisions anymore because numbers tell differently. So what I'm saying, now that you have a little bit practiced the dumb or goal setting is that these are probably issues you need to facilitate 
And again, just like with all these three tools we have been using, just remembering that you put a tool into action and the tool will probably help you do what it is supposed to do. But a good facilitator also understands the meta level that if I put this tool here, it's kind of looking around seeing that what other things start popping up, you know, maybe it's power relations. Why is it so difficult for them to do the measurements? Well, maybe it is because they are so afraid of failure and this measurement could potentially show that. Good, that was my take. Uh, Yori, back to you. Yes, as the title of this lecture, of this session uh, tells, we take now a little bit deeper dive uh, to facilitation as a process and, 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 and uh, as a social dynamics and how to make it, how do we add probability that make, uh, makes our facilitation impactful. Uh, first, a little bit about this definition, what, what we talk about when we talk about facilitation, surprise, surprise in fourth lecture. Uh, but then uh, I will invite you to, to have two uh, group sessions. So first, uh, a little bit about your experiences so far, and after that, we go to facilitation as a process uh, and, and, and then talk about a little bit this outcomes versus experiences. And uh, break will be something like uh, 17.05, five minutes as usual. And, and after that, going, going to this uh, adding probability. So I think the facilitation is always about probabilities. It's never for sure that using these tools it's it's absolutely certain that this will happen. It's it's never that because it's it's very living living thing, social system. So, but we can uh, create conditions for success. So, add probability as such as such. And in the end, in the same groups, we will have another uh, other other discussion about your insights, about your own personal style, your 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 uh, what what our kind of your. Uh, based on your personality and, 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 and experience so far, what are your kind of highlights in your own, own style? And then uh, next assignment. But when we talk about facilitation, so it's, uh, it's something like to enable the act of making something easier. So it's kind of making things run smoother. It's kind of helping, uh, uh, helping things uh, uh, to flow, uh, and uh, and of course there's multiple meanings in in various contexts as well, uh, but in in, uh, in in organizational context it's pretty much connected to collective meaning making, decision making, problem solving, conflict resolution, learning, experimentation, ideation, development, change, transformation, reflection. So pretty much in in and of course the leading uh, leading in leadership as well. So maybe maybe you could also have this equation mark that, that that leadership is sometimes quite close to facilitation that we help organization team to 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 perform and and not just uh, have a have a kind of authority role uh, so it's it's kind of helping roles and uh, and of course we can use that in 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 quite quite a variety of situation settings so uh so it can it can be somehow uh, in this kind of uh, enthusiastic and highly positive innovation workshops to challenging organizational renewals with strong emotions and tension involved. So there is a different, and sometimes it's it's much nicer when people are, let's say, innovative, enthusiastic, and, and happy and so forth. And so it's easy to boost that. But of course, then the, in facilitation, we have to also take a critical stance that are we now derailing because we are so so uh, enthusiastic and 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 uh, love our ideas and so forth. So then it's it's a little bit uh, holding back. And then in in this kind of more uh, touchy situations, it's of course uh, being able to be really uh, present and and listening people and and be, being cautious that that. Uh, that things uh, under scrutiny is are are, are taking uh, are considered in 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 uh, in uh, this kind of uh, delicate way, but still meeting helping people to meet those maybe too difficult discussion and and uh, issues together in, in a respective way. And of course, that 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 kind of situation requires quite a bit already experience. And 
Of course, the facilitating can be that we help two people to discuss. So uh, that can be a kind of uh, simplest situation, or you having a being a pair, so asking other person to to helping him or her to make make sense and 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 configure elaborate ideas further. But it it could be also be very large groups of several hundred people. Actually, this latter, uh, this this. Uh, 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 picture here, a lot of people, actually I was, I was facilitating this kind of 800 people dialogue session uh, in, in, uh, and it was it was very interesting setup too. And it was quite 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 nice, nice setup. So having this kind of uh, meta facilitation because there was co-facilitators in, in its, 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 its uh, uh, group sessions. And somehow, of course, it's professional practice, but uh, we can, we can also take this kind of stance in our everyday conversations so is ask more questions being more let's say listening allowing other to talk and 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 uh, and and help him or her to, to to figure out and sometimes that kind of practice is is is, is rewarded as a yes it was very good discussion as such so i think it's it's really a, a good uh, stance in a way in, in many social setups and we can we can talk facilitation <clears throat> kind of helping. So and uh, and and what's important there is quite often that uh, that it's it's good that the facilitator or helper is has a neutral stance, neutral position, uh, and 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 can then be kind of uh, outside helper and have no stake uh, in in the issue under under discussion, uh, but is is focusing on the process. And uh, I think it's very important to keep the participants responsible for their own questions and 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 answers. And so it's 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 you know in a way not feeding something. And of course it's 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 this balance that how much I will offer my own ideas and expertise, but then we can end up being a kind of expert consultant, and then sometimes it it. it destroys in a way the facilitation process because we we fall out uh, uh, of the role but of course there is a certain situation where where it can be helpful but uh, i think here when we talk about the facilitation it's it's good to good to see the 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 differences here in in, in the expert roles and 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 really the facilitation role so somehow the facilitator guides and enables the collective conversational process from the neutral position so purpose boundaries dialogue Dialogic interaction and appropriate uh, appropriate involvement in a way that that it's uh, it's this kind of uh, feeding feeding and maintaining the process, and of course when we talk about coaching, mentoring, counseling, process consultation, they are kind of related concepts uh, and and based on the same uh, same kind of uh, mechanism being a helper. But okay, now we could go take our first. Uh, group discussion. So uh, Annika will now put you in, in four or five person groups. And uh, so as, as usual, have a conversation. Uh, what do you think? What makes a facilitation successful? What's your ideas at the moment? What are the kind of in, important ingredients? ingredients? And, and share your views, ideas, and, and write a short summary to chat when coming back. And I will share this slide as well. So. Uh, Okay, thanks for uh, reading your lists uh, and it uh, looks that you are very well in tune uh, and uh, on the top of the things uh, as, as such. But let me now open up a little bit this uh, further and, uh, and, and before the break uh, and, and then we go later on to, to this adding probability and utilizing your, your uh, Kind of points as well, uh, but when we are talking about facilitation in a, in a, in, a, in a change, it's always that we have a certain one event session workshop, and 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 I have now this point of view that it's it's been normally planned. Okay, we have now this fixed work strategy workshop or or some kind of team workshop, or uh, and and that then then there can be multiple workshops supporting a, a, a larger process, but it's always that. In a way, large transformations uh, are quite often advanced through single good events and encounters. So that's that's 
then that we we are focusing on, on certain events that of course they have to serve the the bigger uh, bigger goals as well but as facilitator i think that's that's good uh, good point of view and when we talk now now about the, uh, the facilitation as a process then of course what are the elements we are uh, we are we are planning with or or uh, which are kind of impacting uh, and of course as as we have been talking previously every facilitation process happens in a, in a context so whether in organization and and uh, and or so some other context but understanding that context as it was in your uh, this this uh, exercises already that understanding that 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 there is every team has as it's in in a, in a, in a uh, wider part of the wider organization and then the organization of the uh, its environment and, and so forth. But understanding the context is, is one thing. Then purpose and names. Facilitation is aiming to produce something. Uh, whether it's just a good conversation, then we can evaluate it. Was the conversation productive, good, elaborating, and 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 it, it can have and must have a certain certain cause. So clarifying the purpose and names is 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 uh, is a one thing. Then of course who are the participants? Uh, who are the kind of appropriate participants in in, in that person, in the in that uh, for that purpose? Uh, that's that's uh, important. And then choosing methods and approach serving the purpose, and of course fitting the context. That's that's one one fit needed. And then of course facilitator is, is a critical element as well. So how we can serve. Uh, serve those purposes and aims within that context and what our, our methods uh, and approaches we are using uh, and and finally what are the kind of uh, outcomes let's say concrete outcomes and also what is the process experience and, and i think these these two two are needed and uh, planning this accordingly is, is now uh, after the break we go more more deeply in that but as uh, risto mentioned uh previous time uh it, it's this kind of process of 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 uh, reification so outputs uh what are we uh achieving what what are the kind of documentation or or output from our the process and then other other side is the participation that 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 how we are experiencing the uh the, the situation what's what's left and 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 uh, that's kind of uh negotiation process uh, and, and so I would I would say that we must focus on outcomes, but also the experience. And uh, it, it's it facilitation is always a meaning making process that we generate new meanings, give <clears throat> new meanings to the old meanings, change them, and 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 do that collectively. And using different tools in that process can help to structure the the meaning making process. Uh, but the, uh, this this outcome and experience it's 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 important to be in in, in balance. And when we talk about the outcomes and uh, risk experience, so the participation is always lived experience, and it it will always happen, uh, whether it's good or bad. But but uh, and and uh, and quite often it can be if we don't focus and plan how what kind of experience people gain, then there can be unintended uh, experiences as well or or results uh, which can be sometimes contradictive that okay we we aim to have a good dialogue but actually we we end up having a very monologic way of work <clears throat> and then this concrete outcomes are uh, this verification part uh, and afterwards we, when we reflect on we give meanings to both but actually it's it's interesting that this experiential part uh, it tends to produce more powerful memories and traces, and I would argue that that this this experiential part is anyway building the culture. So that that that's, uh, but we need also these these uh, these outputs uh, because they they then we can come back and then we can talk about that that what we what 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 did we discuss where did we end up, and so uh, uh, balancing this 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 too i i think it's 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 a kind of key let's now start going further uh so some some 
point now uh, about the good good facilitation experience, what what characterizes it, uh, and and uh, these are again pretty much of, of, of good good collab collaboration, communication, leadership, and so, so far. But uh, I think one important part is that there is this kind of appreciation, appreciative stance, and, and uh, inclusive uh, kind of way of working that we, as facilitators, we are really take into account that the whole group uh, feel included and, and, and that we appreciate, we show our appreciation uh, how how people are working and how they uh, what kind of effort they make and part of that is also that that we uh, uh, facilitate also this kind of connection between the participants and also our relatedness seeing that that how we relate that we have a kind of positive uh, relationship and contributive way of communicating uh, with, with the group and being kind of confrontative I think we can also have this kind of uh, positively critical stance sometimes asking uh, questions that open up new avenues in a way, or if the group will end up having a little bit too vague ideas or not so concrete and, and so on. So that's that's also the style, how we then challenge them to, to, to go deeper or concretize their goals or, or and, and so forth. And these tools can really help help there. They, they give us structure. Uh, and of course, it's, it's something about that we, we create some new, some kind of new shared understanding and, and meanings. And also this re reification part is that there is a feeling of accomplishment that, that having these goals that, that we, in the end of the session, that we, we have, uh, We've achieved something. I think that's also the part. But it, of course, it can be also that sometimes a good uh, conversation, that was good quality conversation, is also good can can be a good accomplishment at that point. Then that that we don't we we work on meaningful issues that that we feel that meaningfulness that this this was important, and and and, and sometimes also. Uh, feeling of emancipation or empowerment that can be included that that that, that group the team feel that okay now now we we can go forward with this these ideas uh, and then in the end also this that 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 the team or pe people persons feel more kind of have a self efficacy feeling that we are more capable and competent with these issues that we have learned something uh, and not just individuals, but that, but as, as a group. And having kind of supportive atmosphere and uh, and 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 of course, in change situation, there are always some some uh, emotions involved and, uh, and and moments of confusion or uh, unknowing and and maybe even frustration sometimes. But uh, supporting, having this kind of supportive atmosphere or encouraging atmosphere from the facilitator's side is, is important. And in the end, of course, it's, it's good that if there's a willingness to continue, okay, that, okay, now this was a good session, let's let's go forward with this. this. And, and of course, many times, uh, it's also learning a new way of discussing and, and being present within a team. Uh, so that that could that that's part of the creating culture uh, that is sharing and 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 uh, and, and the dialogic in that sense. But okay, now when we talk about how we can really to add build a good facilitation process and 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 how how to how to be prepared. Uh, I think one important point is that that transformational workshop or session it must express the culture and values it's aiming to promote. So as I, I already said, that, that dialogical culture cannot be promoted by monological means, meaning that that it's 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 it, the, the way we uh, conduct and have these change workshops. They they must if you are aiming to 
build kind of more self uh, self managed teams or or show. So then we have to plan the facilitation work to, that they really practice that self management there. That we are not teaching them to do, it, but they really uh, take responsibility to 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 start practicing those kind of self management practices, or at least. Uh, uh, this kind of uh, engagement involvement uh, is, 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 is there. So facilitated process, adding probability for success. What are kind of, of course, we have a certain uh, uh, stages of the process and, and, and first is the preparation. So that what happens before the, the process and then actually how we start. How we maintain the flow during the process, uh, and then how we close uh, in 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 a, in, a, in a good way. And uh, when we talk about the preparation, uh, I think it's it's very very important to 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 plan well, and planning well and in a detailed way as well is preparing us to to improvise as well and so that's uh, so planning doesn't mean that that we are really uh doing just exactly what we have planned because it's a living process but as we were talking about the context uh, so i think one one thing is that we it's good to know about the context so what is the situation culture why the session is 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 uh, what's the why the session will take place what are the possible is there any tensions within the group or or in organization what are the touch issues dependencies owner of the process expectations that we know more ex, uh, enough about the context uh, when we are discussing with someone so okay can you come to facilitate this kind of workshop so okay yes i can come but uh, tell me more about what's the situation so uh, then the participants so uh, who who are participating who should and and will participate and and what are their situation are they new group have they worked or more established group or are they all over the organization how they are actually dependent on each other or are they just uh, working differently and and so all that is is, is uh, how they do they know each other what are the kind of expectations they are having and how we can manage those expectations so sending messages and so uh, preparing them uh, asking them to prepare and and giving pre-info that they know uh, enough what to expect and ourselves what's my what's our assumptions about the group about the organization what do we expect what are our worries uh, and how to be prepared so do i sleep enough and and and, and so forth or do i choose to go to workshop when i'm having a heavy heavy load already during that day so that that's 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 something that we it's good to consider as well but of course when we are sometimes routinized then uh, it can happen but the, for me, for example, being experienced, sometimes if I don't prepare myself well, I think that's okay, this goes as, as usual and so forth, then it can be a failure. I noticed that I'm, I, I wasn't prepared and some surprises will happen. So imagine that what can happen, how to be prepared that, that okay, I hope that this will happen, but then what ifs? So I, I think it's it's important also think those and methods and process so what what's my plan what kind of tools i can use is there any options can i just what what's in my repertoire because sometimes it's 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 so that when we have a hammer we're good using hammer then we see nails everywhere so i mean that it's it, in in facilitation it's good to have different methods sometimes it's good just to discuss and not using different tools so much, but tools are very good in, in, in structuring. And of course, when we are 
a little bit more inexperienced and 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 starting to do this. So tools are kind of uh, kind of safeguard for us, but still they are just tools, as as we have uh, emphasized uh, already here pretty much. So, but uh, figuring out what kind of process, if a two hour one day workshop, what whatever. So planning the process in a way, what could be the critical moments. Uh, where the breaks will be and 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 so forth, and really in a way going through that that uh, uh, that uh, thinking through, and in a way simulating. Uh, my wife uh, sometimes laughs when when I'm talking alone here in in my, in my room because I I go through what I will say what what could be the the moments and 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 then of course what ifs because sometimes we have planning we have one hour talking something, but it, it turns out that that's really a big issue that we have to use more time for that. And then how we can leave something more, something else out and then uh, uh, concentrate on that hot issue. Because sometimes it's it, it's really violating when we force the, the, uh, the group uh, stop the discussing something that is, is, is important because we have plan and so and 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 that can lead to failure and so it's 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 good to utilize the, the what what comes up and and turn that towards the the, the aim and purpose of the of the workshop and then the arrangements i think it's good to know what what is the site what 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 kind of room or space is is uh, is, is uh, booked and uh, what kind of equipment there are what, what technology to use pre-testing being in place early enough so uh, uh, and I, I i want to go if i have a training session with this kind of facilitated work uh, i want to go there to visit the place that i can imagine the, how how the how the place will work for for the purpose but sometimes it's not possible but uh, but ending up in in a room where there's one big big table fixed and 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 you want to have a group discussions then you have to really uh, be creative in that, but so this this preparation is uh, creating us to, to kind of uh, that that uh, that we have we are able to then improvise when needed, and 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 uh, more you have experienced, <clears throat> more stuff you have uh, <clears throat> to to think through than what what could happen. But okay, then getting started, setting up the state, building trust and connection. So uh, quite often we go straight to, to, to the issues and start talking and not have a sort of warm up. But I would really emphasize to take a moment to, to, to uh, set the states and, 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 and uh, get to the mood and agree on, on how, how to work. So taking adequate time for starting. Uh, introduction warm up, noticing others become personally present so that we agree on, okay, we are now working with this and close your laptops and let's start do it, do, concentrating on, on, on this. Agreeing the purpose and aims. So why are, why are we here? What are we aiming at? Uh, and do we agree that or, or understand in an ad adequate way? Then, presenting the ways of working. So methods, values, and principles, how we how we're gonna work. And if we want to have a dialogue, then we can also discuss a little bit what what, what does it require to have a good dialogue, uh, for example. And uh, then roles and boundaries that we can, okay, we can tell what what we as facilitators, what's our roles and what our uh, uh, kind of uh, other 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 social boundaries uh, in, 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 the, in the situation. And then, of course, it's it's also good sometimes to connect to, to the previous knowledge and experience. That, that okay, let's let's talk about what, what what kind of change experience you are having already. That what what, what you have talked before about that. So connecting uh, also the previous. It's it's uh, and if we come as a neutral outsider, then that we are sensitized that okay, what you know already that we don't presume that okay now nobody knows anything about this, but but. People usually have a lot of knowledge already and experience, and, and respecting that, it, it, it creates a good bond. Uh, 
and then of course connecting the organization context as a whole so uh, how this is this is now uh, connected to 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 your strategy and so forth if if need okay so idea that that and and of course when we have a one day workshop then we can take a little bit more time to that if we have a with group who doesn't know each other or who are very familiar with each other and so forth so it, it depends but having kind of agreeing what we are doing and and aiming at and and who are we how are we going to work all that is 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 some somehow good to, good to uh, take a moment to discuss because then we can avoid and we can also create when we agree certain rules that okay uh, i'm i'm taking care of the timetable for example or a schedule or a clock as as a facilitator then we can have also okay now it's time for lunch, so let's let's stop this discussion here. And so uh, then it makes us easier to take care of the, the boundaries. And then during the work, during the uh, the process, uh, it's it's just keeping up the rhythm, as as it was mentioned already in in your own list. So uh, what's the good rhythm with with the action versus pause pauses, and 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 what are the different ways of uh, working that that. Uh, keep up the uh, kind of active stance. And then as was already mentioned, uh, involving and including people in a appreciative way. So having this kind of, uh, because there's quite often more talkative people, more more taking stage more and, and some are more silent. So then, then we can balance this that, okay, it's good that you have, you have now uh, being active here, but I would like to hear also what, what, what these, what you are uh, thinking about this and so it's also sometimes giving roles and or positions sometimes okay uh and, and we can ask more active people to take a listener stance and then invite more silent people to talk with each other and elaborate further what they think think about that what has been discussed for example and so uh that way we can we can balance and 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 of course it's it's uh, as what, what are kind of hot issues uh, because sometimes it's so that people are when they have worries uh, they think tend to think about those issues all the time and they, it's hard to concentrate something else so how can we utilize all those uh, hot stuff uh, in, in in workshops uh, in workshop and and uh, and in a way that energy people are having how we can uh, focus that towards the to the purpose and goal of the of the workshop, uh, and and so uh, being kind of sensitive with that, and of course, it is sometimes that there's these tensions and so on, so uh, interrupting or redirecting to unfruitful, unconstructed debate or interventions, uh, and 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 that is when we have agreed on these rules that being respected, respectful, and okay. Is it okay that I will then cut this kind of issues? And then we have we, we have a role uh, and, and, and legitimate role to, to uh, also interrupt. Uh, and sometimes people get stuck. So it's it's also part of the facilitator's role to help the, the participant to move forward. Well, in, in, and different situations can be in different ways. So uh, having certain tools to do that, but also quite often to, to if there's a subgroup who is stuck in a group work, then, then we can go there and ask them to uh, just interview a little bit and, and, and help help them uh, to get new ideas or learn, find a certain uh, angle. Channeling emotional energy to serve the purpose. So sometimes frustration and agony uh, it will be present and then listening to that as well as enthusiasm and joy it's, 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 it's good in a way to to hear that okay now it seems that it's time to have a break or uh and and, and cool down a little bit and then talk about that okay i seem i, I feel that there is a maybe a little bit of frustration now with this issue what do you say about that so asking about emotions can be also a respectful way taking a moment to talk about that. But of course, there is certain groups that don't want to talk about that, but quite often it, it, it can really, when we are focusing on the feelings and why we are having this frustration now, 
it's really respectful and it can be a turning point in, in, a, uh, in a facilitation process. And of course that we as facilitators, when there's leadership, uh, uh, team leadership or team leader, and, and so quite often the external facilitator can enable also the leaders to participate, but then we can't replace the leaders. So it's, it's good, good to have a, have, a, have a deal how we support leadership in place because we can fall out uh, easily when we start to give good advice uh, to, to leaders in, in there or, or uh, start telling what, what's, what, what they have to do, should do. And, and, and that then we fail, to be honest. Uh, and then uh, one thing is also that we, when we are facing uh, change, there's uncertainties that am I competent in this change process? And, 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 and it's, it's also important to uh, somehow take care that how we can support the competence feeling among the participants, that they are capable of doing, doing stuff already and encourage them uh, to get the experiences and so so forth, but but somehow this feeling of competence is 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 quite pivotal as well. Okay, and there could be other stuff as well, but here are some some kind of uh, points that we should uh, 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 pay attention to when when during during the course. And finally, in the end. Closing and reflection. Uh, it's also good to reserve time for for closing. Not just okay, here are the results and then we go away, but but really to uh, assess the outcomes. Okay, comparing to expectations. Okay, we re we have this documentation, these canvases, this this stuff. What do you think is uh, what what did we achieve? So what's good? What might be missing? Missing and so forth. But then also reflecting on the experience, so personally and collectively. So how did we work together? How was this experience? How did it support us to be a better team? How did it support our, our cultural aims? Uh, and and uh, what did I learn as a person? Or how, did, what, uh, how was my contribution? Am I, am I happy with that? So asking this kind of reflective question is also good. And then agreeing on the next step. So what will happen with me, with us as a facilitator or, or otherwise? So what, would, what will you do after this? So next workshop, next action, who and when? And I think it's a good practice also to agree on that. So, and, and, and then I think the, the facilitative process that we can have a good start, maintaining flow, and then also the good closing and, and reflective talk afterwards, uh, then I think, we have good probabilities to, to have a contributive session. Okay. Now there's some, some stuff in chat. Yeah, it's for conflict, conflict resolution. But when does facilitation end and conflict resolution begin? Okay. Yeah, I, I think this 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 kind of uh, conflict resolution is really a facilitated process process in, as as such that that we have a uh, or or this kind of sovittelu in Finnish Finnish can be one 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 thing as as well and it's it's a strongly facilitated pro process uh, in a way at, at, and of course sometimes it's 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 consultant will doing that or or uh, or or this kind of sovittelia. But now it's time for you to have a personal consideration two minutes. Uh, so take a moment by yourself to think what would you like to emphasize or highlight in your forthcoming sessions, workshops as a facilitator or as a participant to ensure a good experience for all. So meaning that I would argue that it's good as a participant to think about our, how accountable we are, that we are successful uh, in, in a process. But take a, take a moment, think about your personal 
person, personal stance or ideas, what you want to emphasize or highlight or develop further in your own style of facilitating. All right, uh, now Annika, it's time to, to go second time to, to breakout rooms. And uh, have a dialogue in the same groups. What will you emphasize in your personal facilitation practice and process in the future? Agree who will start, listen carefully what the other person say, connect to your talk to previous ones. So in the end, have a mutual reflection. How was the experience? How were you able to generate and maintain a dialogic moment? Write short notes about your experience to chat. So meaning that try to be dialogic in a way that, that you just say your stuff, but make connections. When one person start, everybody listens carefully and next person, you can continue from that. So I, well, I have the same and then this and that. So try to do this kind of uh, connecting story and and uh, and then last five minutes. So all together 15 minutes, first 10 minutes having, having this kind of dialogue and then reflection on that and write about this reflection to, to experience. Uh, how did you succeed in this kind of setup? Was great and uh, thanks for sharing this that this now that was a sort of facilitation that i did here because i i gave you instruction how to have a have a have a discussion of course if you follow that then you end up uh, having a different kind of conversation and that's one way i i really uh recommend you to do that uh that that creating this kind of rules and also maybe experiment, experiment a little bit. And then it can happen that people, people follow those. And then reflecting on the experience, for example, as well, then, then we, can, we can learn doing that. Uh, and, and it can happen that the experience is so good that people are more focused listening to each other and making connections. And then after that, it, it, can, it really pounds the group in a different way. And uh, and sometimes people are not following the rules, but uh, still, again, saying that we can add probability uh, that that it can happen. Okay, I uh, hope you all had uh, good stuff. Uh, now yeah. I'll link the attendance from now to the chat. Okay, please do. So five minutes left. Uh, our next exercise. And now it's it's uh, it's uh, different in that sense that uh, the point is to have a reflective dialogue on your course experience so far, meaning that it, both of you 
should prepare by making your personal recap on the course experience so far. So write down your your kind of uh, how you have been working, what have been your insights, how you have experienced uh, the exercises, how you have experienced the course as a, as a whole, the sessions, and so forth. Uh, and then the idea is to have two 15-minute sparring coaching style discussions in which the other will serve as a listener or helper, while the other will reflect on the personal course experience and insights so far. So the facilitator or the coach or sparring partner is, is asking more, uh, helping, helping the other person to give meanings and, 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 and open up the experience, what, what has been uh, important so far. And then switch the roles. So both will serve as, as, a, as, a, as a client and as a, as a, as a uh, coach. And as a coach or, or a facilitator in that sense, concentrate on listening and making support questions. And don't start sharing your own experience when listening to the other. So that's the point now that, that you, you really concentrate on listening and, and helping other to make meaning of the uh, uh, meaning. Uh, on, on the course, uh, course experience. And then after you have had these two, two 15 minute uh, sessions, so have a reflective discussion and share your experience and uh, assess how we were able to have a helping conversation. So you can give feedback that, okay, you, it was very nice to, to talk, talk when you were enabling me to talk when you listen so carefully. And then both will write a personal memo, max one page of your discussion experience. So, uh, so there will be two. Uh, so everybody must uh, must write a, a personal and, and, and submit a personal memo, and and just uh, of your discussion experience. How was it to be a coach? How was it to be a client? What did you learn, realize personally from the exercise? So this is. Short little exercise, but but still in fifteen minutes, it's it's possible to to get a focused uh, exercise or or experience on 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 how to listen carefully, and and then how was how the how the this kind of session can enable us to to make meaning of our course experience. So this kind of meta meta approach, and so. Uh, 23rd of May, so next week, Tuesday. Is it so? Yes. So, lecture four next week, tools, sprints, workshops, canvases, going further with those.